Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shintaro Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Today we're going to talk about how to be a better grappler. Yeah, and this is an interesting topic and we have lots of to- lots to talk about. So yep. let's first start with the definition. What does it mean to be a better grappler? Better grappler. All right, so if you're listening to this podcast, you probably do judo, jiu-jitsu, sambo, something of the grappling arts, right? right? Wrestling even. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a little bit different from striking, like kickboxing and karate and all those different things. Right. right? So being a better grappler as a whole uh, encompasses all the different grappling martial arts, like Mm -hmm. I just said. Right. So going into a dojo, I want to be a great judoka. Right. Is a little bit different than I want to be an Olympic level judoka. Right. right? Because all the different rule sets tells you what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. So I think being a better grappler is almost like, oh, I want to be a good martial artist, a little bit more generalized. Mm -hmm. So do you you mean that in more of a technical sense, like you have to be able to do all kinds of uh, submission techniques as well as takedowns? Or do you, it's more of a mindset, you think? It's a growth mindset for sure. It's a learner's mindset, right? right? And if you're only playing to a certain rule set, it's very mm-hmm. restrictive, mm-hmm. right? And then you, you don't want to be the person policing the rules like, oh, you can't, you can do this, you can't do that. Well, you can't put your fingers in here or do that or do this, right? You know? right? So, right, you want to be just an overall better grappler, period, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes it is like, uh, you know, learning submissions in a way where you're borrowing from other martial arts and you're trying this and trying that. You Mm. really want to sort of take a holistic view on this thing. Right. Right. So, all right, then in that sense, do you think there's a good starting point in terms of which grappling art you choose? I mean, I'm always biased towards judo, right? Right. But this is the thing. I like judo, but maybe judo isn't right for you. Right. Knowing yourself is first and foremost, right? And then knowing what's available to you, right? Mm -hmm. Accessibility is the second most important thing. Right. You can be like, oh, man, you know, uh, I really love grappling. I want to do BJJ, but there's no BJJ schools in your neighborhood. But your high school offers a wrestling program. Mm -hmm. Go wrestle. Right. hundred thousand percent. It's like, oh, should I drive two hours to a dojo outside of my town uh, because I really want to do judo instead of wrestling? But my high school offers wrestling, but I want to be a better grappler. Right. Wrestle. Right. You're not going to take two hours out of your day. And longevity is the key. Right. Right. You got to yep. You got to remove all the friction. It's better it's better to do something than nothing. Yes. Yeah. That's absolutely right. And then also knowing the community that you're joining, mm-hmm. right? Having a good teacher is very important. Mm. You could want to do judo your whole life. Oh, there's a dojo right down the street. It's super convenient, mm-hmm. right? Uh this I'm all in. You go, the sensei is a dick. Mm. <laughs> right? like you're not gonna last right, right. you're not you're gonna end up hating it you're gonna be like right. no judo's not for me uh that sensei was not for you right right, right. or maybe you weren't the right fit for that community mm-hmm. right maybe you were talking too much and they didn't want talkers they want grapplers you know? <laughs> who knows right so it's got to be the right fit in every way there's a couple different variables knowing yourself is first yeah uh-huh. right some people tend to be harder than others right mm-hmm. they like grappling they love scrapping mm-hmm. they're just a tough and tumble type of a kid and that person might say you know what I want to play golf and golf's born for them. So mm. they're like, I want something a little bit more. Right. Right. And then they enter the grappling. Maybe you're the opposite of that. Right. No one in your family has ever grappled or done any sort of martial arts. Mm-hmm. Right. They're artistic people. Mm. And they're like, ah, combat sports. Like, I know nothing about that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want my kid going in that. And they coddled you. Right. <laughs> that kid might not be the best candidate. Right. Because they're not coming in with some of the tools. I'm not saying it's not for them. I'm right. not saying that. And you can learn from them. But how, going into a, a martial arts school where the teacher can identify that and t- still help you grow. Right. That's really the important thing. I see. So so we talk, uh, the, the finding the right teacher is important. So in that way, I think you're kind of touching on this broader topic of finding the best dojo for you uh, yeah. when you start. So what I... Besides uh, finding the right teacher, what are some other things that uh, you think people should look for in a dojo? I think safety is first, Uh right? If you're not feeling safe, if something feels off, then it's it's wrong, Mm -hmm. right? If you can't feel safe in a dojo, Mm -hmm. then something's off. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason why I say it is because it's such a high contact sport and a combative sport, Mm. right? Uh, One thing that can 
happen, another thing that can happen, and then all of a sudden it's escalating and right. it's getting out of hand. Uh-huh. Right. And if everyone doesn't feel comfortable with each other, trust each other because essentially if you're going for an on bar, you're trusting the other person with your limb. You're in your limb is in like the most vulnerable place. Mm-hmm. You're trusting that the person has a competency not to crank it in a way he doesn't understand, mm-hmm. right? Giving you the opportunity to submit. Right. right? And even uh, you know, when you have the arm extended, right? Mm-hmm. And you're trying to wiggle out of it, it's like all right, you both have an understanding of like, oh, I'm in a very vulnerable position. Right. Right. Intensity has to drop immediately. Mm-hmm. Right. Even if you're rolling uh, 80% intensity, the arm gets extended. It, immediately, the intensity has to drop to 20%, 10% in order to work on some of those vulnerable positions. Right? Yeah. And if everyone has that mindset, it's great. But if everyone's go, 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 100%, 100%, my ego, your ego, I got this on bar. I've never submitted Peter before. I'm, <laughs> I want to go for it. And Peter's trying to wiggle out of it. And then I start freaking cranking it, right? That's not safe. So it's, it's more, I mean, it, uh, it, you have to be vulnerable. You have to like go into the unknown in order to yeah. get better. It's, and if you don't feel safe in the unknown, going into the unknown, yes. you'll never like yeah. develop in a way. And it's the little things that you can yeah. look for in the dojo. Right. Like if I'm lo- never done grappling before I walk into a dojo, I'm watching people cranking on arms and cranking on legs and slamming each other. I'm not going to know if that's a safe environment or not. Right, right. You just don't have the lens or the perspective to be able to seek out the safety, mm-hmm. right? Seek out the danger. Everything looks dangerous to you. That's a good point. you've never done yeah. it before. Yeah. So the way you can tell is the little indicators of the types of interaction people are having, the way people talk to each other. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like foreshadowing and like <laughs> reading yeah. a, a book or something right <laughs> yeah this uh character that gets built up he's you know says a mean thing says this and that and people don't like him and there's these little micro conflicts uh-huh. you know that person's gonna have a big conflict down the line right right any book that you've ever read right <laughs> that's right? a good analogy the same yeah yeah thing, yeah so if you're in the dojo and the guy's being condescending or being a dick or saying mean things like Right. There's deeper issues there. Mm-hmm. Right. Since they checked out, he's looking out in the space, he's texting. There's d- deeper issues there. Mm-hmm. Right. So going in there and monitoring and scanning for things like this is the best way. Those right? small red flags, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like uh, when you start dating someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, red are... flag this, red flag that. It's like, all right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause me a lot more troubles at the end. Maybe in a way. In the um. I mean, I guess it, 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 if you're, yeah, like in the dating scene too, like if you meet someone new, you might want to, you know, run that, run that person by to your good friends to see what they think. So in a way, it would be, it would be very helpful if you have a grappling friend already, I guess, to Yeah, it, when look, you have somebody already in the game, right. they can educate you and teach you and guide you. Right. Right. That's why referral is always the best type of, uh, right. right. Yeah, because you get, there's a, already a, like a, preliminary vetting process in a way yeah. um so yeah so now you found the right dojo and then you're like fully into it you love the people you love the community yeah. the teacher's great he know he or she knows your needs and yeah you know uh whatnot so now you're getting down to the nitty-gritties learning the mm. techniques what is uh, uh what do you think uh people should look for in that like attitude wise or some technique wise yeah i think having good conversations with coaches Mm -hmm. and people who are seniors to you is very important Mm -hmm. because you could come in as a beginner and watch a million youtube videos and not have any clue what you're looking at Mm -hmm. certain techniques that may work that look really cool Mm -hmm. right are very low percentage and then it might be a huge waste of time for you to drill that one technique right 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 so you want to go learn the high percentage stuff first, the foundations, the basics, because those mm. never really change, mm. right? Uh, whether it's wrestling, if it's wrestling, it's a double leg. If it's right. uh, you know BJJ, it's on bar from close guard, mm. you know. And if it's judo, it's like uh, Ipon Sanagi, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> or Ukemi. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. Yeah. That'll- laughs> so you definitely want to focus on that. You, uh, I'm not saying don't watch YouTube, right? Watch a lot of YouTube, but then have an open dialogue. Hey, Peter, what do you think about this vid- match that I saw? And right. I have students that still send me videos from Instagram like, hey, what do you think about this? Or they'll tag me in something like, hey, can we learn this, sensei? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm like, no, this is dangerous. Right, like, right. No, this is, you know, flying guillotine is probably not the best technique for you right. to learn right now because you're a yellow <laughs> book, right? Uh, eventually, I could show you, you uh-huh. know, but I don't really want you going for it because it's dangerous, uh-huh. right? And then tell them the why, the, what my reasoning is. Mm-hmm. And if they're a smart person, right, they like, okay, I get it. 
mm-hmm. you know, and then sometimes they argue and they're like, ah, I, I don't believe that to be true. I've seen, you know, this world champion hit it. I'm like, well, he's a world champion. He could hit that. Right, right. right. Does he not have other fundamentals that are solid? Mm-hmm. He has a great tie He has great gripping, right? Mm-hmm. He has bailout attacks. I guess so all this having uh, that dialogue is huge. This availability, like at this, uh, you know, internet is a double-edged sword. Like you have so much to look at, but at the same time, it's hard to filter that. Like, yeah, hard to filter it. And knowing yourself is, right. you know, I said this all earlier, but it's very important. Everyone has different learning styles, right? Mm-hmm. Some people are you know, inter- interpersonal, intrapersonal, mm-hmm. right? Some people are tactile kinesthetic learners. Some mm-hmm. people, I have students now, they're like, I want to read a book. I want right, to read a right. book about it. Can oh, I get a technique yeah. book? Can you recommend it? That's how I learn best, uh-huh. right? There's these textbook warriors too that read textbooks and read text. Some people are visual learners. I'm a mm-hmm. little bit more of a visual learner. Mm-hmm. I like watching YouTube videos, right? Right. But you can't just learn by watching. You have to actually do. So right. you have to have some sort of a tactile kinesthetic thing. Right, right. Right? But it really depends on what your ultimate goals are. If you right. just want to learn it, be involved with it, and understand it, right? You don't need to be able to do it, some people, right? Mm-hmm. Some people just want to teach it. That's that's fine. Mm-hmm. And if that means, you know, if that's what being a better grappler means for you, then, mm-hmm. you know, God bless you and keep doing what you're doing. But if you don't understand how you learn, it's going to be very difficult. Like for me, as a kid, I had a really hard time uh, in school because the way we were taught to learn, like memorizing stuff and sitting still was a very, very challenging thing for me. Mm-hmm. So people thought I was dumb and stupid for a very, very long time. <laughs> you know? And some people think that's still to this day, right? I mean, but like, <laughs> like I had struggled with that. Right. You know? It's a, you're just like a different learning. You have a different learning style. And then, yeah. That's like, yeah. It's like memorize the periodic table. Yeah. Like that, I couldn't do it, man. Yeah. Because first of all, I couldn't sit still for long enough to be able to like look at it and be like, okay, magnesium, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever that, it is. Right? I like, didn't I like still that don't know either. It. Yeah. That dude is the work, but yeah. some people can do that good. Right, some people right. Good and that's their learning style. They could just sit down still for 45 minutes, look at it, read it, you know, do flashcards and this. Right, everyone. Some mm-hmm. people like flashcards. Some people like this. Some people like reading. Some people like writing. Right. right. Same thing with grappling. Grappling just tends to be a little bit more physical. Mm-hmm. I see. Right? So knowing yourself is first. Right. You have to know yourself. You know. And then the teacher has to have this kind of a mindset too. Mm-hmm. Because if the teacher's like, "Hey, this guy learns in this way. This guy learns in that way," and then also they have sort of a bank of this guy's motivated by. Right? He's just intrinsically motivated. Right, I had right. a student like that yesterday. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to motivate him at all. I could actually be mean to him and he mm-hmm. like would prefer that. He's like, give me direct <laughs> feedback. Tell me I, I'm sucking at something and I'll work on it. Right. And he'll spend four hours, five hours a day thinking about doing it. Mm-hmm. Right. There's that guy. He's intrinsically motivated. He's right. a super learner. Right. And then you got the other kid that's like, hey, you got to give him high fives. Right, right. There's another kid that just needs constant reminders that he's progressing. Not even a kid and an adult too. Right? Yeah. It's like he needs a stripe. He needs this. He needs a little bit more hand holding. But as long as he stays in the sport, then he'll you know learn. Mm-hmm. Right. Because he learns quickly. So motivation is one factor. And then learning styles is another factor. And having a coach that could know both of those things about you. Right. So, and if you're just an unlikable person, the coach just doesn't care, knows <laughs> nothing about you, and you're just not going to get good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's important to, yeah, that's why you, you, you emphasize that, right? Like fitting into the community, like finding the community that you can belong to. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying like comply, right. and, you know, collectivist, this and that. Like I know a lot of the Asian cultures are like that. I'm not saying that. And right. it's okay to be individual. Right, right. Right. And it's okay to say things that are sort of counter opinion. Uh-huh. You know, and I, I welcome that a lot of the times. Yeah. Right? Since I don't think that works because X, Y, and Z, of course, don't call me in front, out in front of everybody, but I'm, I'm o- open to these things. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I am. Right? Yeah, yeah, you are. And uh, <coughs> so I have a question. So in learning styles, so you're a mm. good teacher. Uh, you know, you are cognizant of all different uh, styles people have. What do you think I am? What kind of learner do you think I am in terms of judo? Just you're curious. kind of a blend. You're kind of a blend. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're you're sort of like a cognitive, right? You're intrinsically motivated too. I didn't, I never had to motivate you. Right, right, right. So you know, Hian is a, a great example. Uh-huh. Right? Hian loves the culture. He loves the right. grappling. Uh, but if he goes, if he goes away and he disappears for a little while, uh, yeah, someone reaches out. Hey, man, we miss you. Uh huh. He's back. Right, 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 right. Right. 
you are just so intrinsically motivated. So I never had to motivate you. I you see what I mean. Yeah, in that way, but I do notice that you do I, have a community at the dojo too. Yeah, right? you have a great place in the community. So motivational wise, like I didn't have to do anything really, mm -hmm. right? For but I do think I because uh, it's just like an observation I made about myself. I do need a lot of encouragement. You do, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's another thing. So you're motivated, you know. So reinforcement is important for you. Uh huh. And for you, a lot of the things that I like to do is like. If I t tell you something and then you can add value to it on your own, right? You mm. can sort of try to integrate it into your current system, right? right? Right, So some people have what they know and I give them a little bit of advice and now all of a sudden they can't really connect the two, mm -hmm. right? So you're not like that. And I don't know if you sit around reading judo text. You probably don't. <laughs> I, I you don't. Sit around I, I do watch watching. videos. I do watch yeah. videos. Yeah, right. So visually, you're uh -huh. a good visual learner. You're an interpersonal learner, right? Because uh -huh. you learn well in a setting where it's just like me and you, mm. right? And that has a lot to do with our trust levels too. Right, you trust right. me. I trust you. You mm. know, we're good friends here, right? So <laughs> all those things. So, and you know, you're a tactile kinesthetic learner as well. Like, yeah. so you're that ability of like, when I show you something and you're like mumbling and working through it and trying it over and over, right? So interpersonal, tactile, kinesthetic, those things are, right? Visual, obviously, because you're watching YouTube videos. Right, right. And, uh, you know, whether you read or... Some people are audio, too, right? They're all listening to this podcast. <laughs> Listen to the podcast, and some people get, gain great value out of these podcasts right. because they're audio learners. Yeah. Right? Some people can't listen to a podcast or anything, you know? Man, bravo, so That's Shintaro. where you are. Yeah, I, I try to keep you know track of the ones that I, I'm invested in, right? Yeah. The people who I care about at the dojo. And I said before, you know, one of my flaws is that I play favorites. I do. You know, I'm a biased human. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's difficult for me not to be biased. Right, right. Man, right. that was good. That was good. See, like find a teacher like Shintaro, guys. Find a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now Are you satisfied with my answer? Am I right? I think that's very accurate. And then, you know, yeah. some of the things I wasn't I I wasn't aware consciously. You pointed out mm -hmm. like a visual learner and then uh, the the tactile uh, learner, like kinesthetic, the kinesthetic yeah. learner. I mean, I now I think back. I I think it makes sense uh, that I yeah. am, and it's it's good that I I am aware so that I can tailor my yeah. journey, a judo journey that way. But yeah, I I, I wasn't yeah. really consciously aware of those facts. The goal of the yeah. teacher right now for me, right, like just as an overall teaching methodology, right, is to cover all of it. Right, right, right. So as I'm showing visually to the people, mm -hmm. right, I'm verbally saying some of these things, right? Right, right, Sleeve right. Sleeve hands going like this, lapel hands going like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, go try it, mm -hmm. right? And then everyone's trying and sort of that's like the kinesthetic side of it, right? Because they have to physically do it, mm -hmm. right? And as I'm walking around, there's certain people that are much more interpersonal, right? They right. need that interpersonal feedback in order to learn something. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, I, I don't talk to me. I'm, I'm focused. I need to concentrate. Mm -hmm. Those people I don't talk to. So sometimes right. it's like it's because I not because I don't like the person, but some people like mumbling to themselves like, oh, I go like my fingers like this, mm -hmm. right? That person doesn't need me coming in and saying, hey, your pinky's not in the right place right. or your stomach is not doing the right thing because that'll only throw them off. Mm -hmm. Right. So you want to cover all the bases when you're teaching so they can pick and choose their method of learning. Right. And I think that's what makes a good teacher. You know? Yeah. That's that, what makes me a great teacher. Yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. So yeah. it, so you get the instructions from your great teacher and now you have to drill uh, and whatnot. Yeah. So how do you uh, to be a better grappler? How do you think people should uh, approach drilling with your mm -hmm. and whatnot? Yeah. Is so it, some people yeah. like to drill, mm -hmm. you know, and if you look at music as an example, some people play the scales every day. Some mm -hmm. people don't, right? Uh, I like the idea of the deliberate practice. But if you're doing randori and you're dropping in Sayanagi, but you can never finish it, mm -hmm. specifically work on the finish. And I know it sounds very, very simple, mm -hmm. right? But there's books and research out there now. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Gladwell, there's this other guy. He wrote this book called Peak. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be actually be here somewhere. Peak. He talks about that. Yeah. Like like the mountain peak. Peak? Uh yeah. I might actually have it right here. Let me just look for it. Two seconds. Two okay. seconds. Okay. Literally two seconds. <laughs> All right. It's called peak. Yeah. It's called. Go. He he's found it. 
All right. Show, no show it in the video. This is yeah. like, I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting yeah. sponsored. I just read this book and I like it. Right. Peak. Peak. Secrets from the new scientist, science of expertise. See, I'm not a reader. So I'm, I can't <laughs> even read it. Anders Ericsson and Robert Poole. So this guy talks about like tennis, right? Uh, and if your weakness is the high backhand, mm -hmm. right? And you kind of know it. Right. And right. you know, you just go in and you play, right? Oh, I play tennis every day th for three hours. Mm -hmm. How often do you have that stimulus of the high backhand? Not that much. Wait, what, 10 times? And right? plus, if you're not good at it, you wouldn't try to be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, it's like, I know that's my weakness. And my coach is like, you suck at the high backhand. Right. All right, so we're only going to do that, right? We're going to spend the next hour doing that. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Now you've ex been exposed to the stimulus a thousand times. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the next time you encounter this in a tennis match, it's coming. It's like, ah, I got it. Boom. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, that's not your weakest anymore. And mm -hmm. it seems so, so simple, right? It's like one of those research studies that's like, oh, a bee sting can hurt you. It's like, no, really? Right? It's just such a, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I would have never thought, you right, know? Right, like, right. It seems like the most simplest thing, but I think that's very important and it gets neglected because uh. we tend to focus on uh, uchikomi. You have to do a thousand uchikomis a day for your techniques to be better. Who said that? Right, right. You know? Well, in the 1940s, when my father was doing judo, like yeah. that's what they're beating into the kids. Yes, but the times are different, right? Deliberate practice is important. So more research, you know? so, yeah. Yeah, so you have to know, it comes down to knowing yourself and what your gaps are. Right. Right, and I, I'm kind of guilty myself of going in there, doing uchikomi, doing gripping, doing combination, doing throws, doing randori, and feeling great about myself. Mm. I see. Right? And if you're kind of just winning mm -hmm. in the dojo, right, mm -hmm. which is something that I don't really recommend and not learning mm -hmm. two different things, right, you tend to fall into that pattern and then you don't tend to not to grow, right, which is my issue too a lot of the times. Right. You know what I mean? Because I could throw anyone in the dojo, mm -hmm. you know, with this technique, that technique, and I could just do that all day and feel great. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, that, that was amazing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for, you know, 30 years. Right. And it, right? So deliberate practice is a big component and being a better grappler right so you gotta you gotta ex basically expand uh uh know your frontier and expand it all, like continuously yeah. yeah and i'm not saying neglect fundamentals you have to right. do some of the fundamentals right 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 but uchikomi i just said this the other day somebody asked me that mm -hmm. and uh i was like how much how many uchikomis should i do in a day mm -hmm. and i'm already thinking to myself that's the wrong question right all right, there is no number of uchikomi that you should do in a day. Right, right. I'll tell you what I do. Uh -huh. I come in and I do 10 of each technique. Or mm. ochi, osoto, 10 taio, 10 uchi. Well, not mm. even taio, uchimata, like a turn throw. Because mm -hmm. the fundamentals of the turn are essentially the same. the same. Yeah. Right. It's the second portion that's the execution part that's a little bit different. Right, right. right. So I'll do a little bit of that. And then I'll do a lot more combination drilling, drilling mm. combinations, drilling situations. Drilling from winning position, losing position, mm -hmm. transitional drilling, right? And it's tough in a class setting, I got to admit, because you're at the mercy of the class. Right, right. right. We're doing nagakomi. Ah, okay, I have to do nagakomi now. Right, right, right. So it helps to be sort of in a, a small group setting too, mm -hmm. right? So is that, that's why you try to uh, have different, like, different types of practice within a practice like you have the instructions yeah. and then the drills and the yeah. uchikomis and then you you do yeah. give students the free time to practice whatever they want in the in terms yeah. of nagikomi yeah. and uchikomi too yeah so generally before the pandemic is like judo starts at seven goes yeah. to eight for the beginner and immediate eight to nine is all live right, right? so right. it's already a two-hour situation people get off work at six mm -hmm. right kids are already done by six fifteen or so mm -hmm. so people come in at like six thirty Right? Right, they right, come right, in 30 right. minutes. Some people come in a little bit earlier and I, I give them the chance to drill and hang out. Right, right. right. And then that, that's the time to work on your stuff, ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Then during Uchikomi time, I'm a little bit more flexible and lenient. Mm. And some people do say like, hey, why don't we do this drill more consistently all the time? Like that'll probably help me. Yeah, it'll help you, but maybe it won't help the next person. Right, right. The overall goal for my class a lot of the times too is interest, keeping people interested, mm -hmm. right? And if we're just doing deliberate practice of like okay this is a situational position that we need to get good at for mm. instance grip fighting losing mm. position winning position right uh over underpass mm -hmm. person misses a throw goes to the back okay attacking the transition when they miss a turn throw 
Okay, and we just drill in that. Yes, you'll get be a better judo player, mm-hmm. competition wise. Right, 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 right. But will people be interested in that? No, which means people will be much more likely to drop off. Right. So those people with a lot of potential who dropped off, they're not going to get the opportunity to be good. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Because, and I kind of did them a disservice by not making the class interesting enough for them to stay in the game. Right. 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 Yeah. So sometimes it's a balance of. You know, producing competitors, which is like not my priority at all. Mm-hmm. Keeping the interest, just people to learn and be a better grad. Like they're all sort of conflicting, but they're sort of not. Right. right? They all kind of, it always plays off of each other. I see. Yeah. That makes sense. So then now what, while we're talking about techniques and then we're also talking about being a general, better general grappler. So now as a beginner, you pro, uh, you might find a lot of different arts. Like maybe you try some BJJ, judo, yeah. and you have some high school wrestling background, what, I, what yeah. have you. So how do you do you, and you have to somehow make it into your system, combine everything. So any tips for that? Like, do you think you need to actively practice techniques you learn from other arts in judo, for example, during practice? Yeah. 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 I do. I, I definitely, definitely do. So here's a good example. In the dojo, mm-hmm. right? When you pass someone's guard, mm-hmm. in judo, you can go to your stomach. Right, right. Because the goal is not to get pinned. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make you a better grappler. Right. Overall. If your goal is competition, yeah, right? Judo competition under the rule sets of the IJF, under the rule sets of the IOC, mm-hmm. right? International Olympic Committee then yes, someone's passing your guard, you go belly down. Mm-hmm. Give him your back. Right. Now, all of a sudden, if you're playing through the rule set of judo, one, two, three, four, five, no forward progression, referee says, stop, get back to your feet. Right. And you want to be good at that, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what gives you the best chance of winning mm-hmm. in competition. Mm-hmm. But does it make you a better grappler? Absolutely not. Right. So in my dojo, well, you know, because you were yeah. there many years, like someone passes the guard, like don't belly out, don't belly down. Mm-hmm. Right? Try to retain guard, try to... Right. Let them pin you. And then even when you're pinning, the goal is not to pin for 20 seconds, 30 seconds to hold them there. It's like fight out, fight out. Right. It's like you struggle for five seconds. Try to escape in five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And if you're pinning, transition to something else. Right. 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 Transition to another pin. One, two, three, four, five. The person just bucketing, going crazy. Right. I don't let people tap out when they're getting pinned. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Then it's just right. Hold them for five seconds. You could tap, yes, but then don't restart. Right, it's a huge right. waste of time. Keep going from that position. Try to retain guard. Try to improve position. Mm-hmm. Even if you're pinning to someone, you transition two or three different positions. Mm-hmm. Now you're looking to isolate an arm, look for a choke, something like this. So the match continues because time is so finite. Right, right. right. Three minute round. If every single time you got pinned or submitted, you have to reset. Mm-hmm. Right, you're burning. You know, a good quarter of the match. Right, right, and that adds up. So um in so yeah you should definitely try to integrate that sort of uh, mentality yeah. into your daily practice. So but yep. then uh, you know those different rule sets like some like for example you're like you want to get good at leg leg locks. Yeah. Um so you learn from Brazilian jiu-jitsu but then um you go to you also go to judo for your uh, throws and whatnot. Yeah. But you can't work on it's like leg locks are not really practice well, in yeah judo. that's really on the other side of the rule set right, right? so yeah how do you think people can rec- uh, should reconcile this kind of conflict in terms mm, of rule sets very good yeah talk to your instructor mm-hmm. uh, i have people all the time like i'm competing in sambo i'm competing in jiu-jitsu right. i'm a wrestler i want to work on leg grabs how do you defend someone trying to tackle you mm-hmm. okay you know we're going to go over it like the last mat, you know, we have three mats in a row. Right, the right, last right. mat, you could shoot on the legs. And I'll do that. And then sometimes I'll say it publicly. Sometimes if these two athletes are willing, mm-hmm. right? It's like, I really want to work on leg grabs. Okay. That guy likes working on leg grabs too. You guys, when you're working out, you could grab leg, leg grabs. Right, cool? right. Right? And then something of that nature. I see. Right? And I make it known, right? Every match has sort of a rule set. And we have a dojo rule set too. Right, right, right. Right? Obviously, I'm not going to let, like, white belts cranking on heel hooks and like, like, <laughs> yeah. flying on bars and stuff, right? That, like, that's definitely a no-no. Right, you right. You know what I mean? And Tanya Toshi is banned unless you're a black belt, mm-hmm. right? And these rule sets are designed not only to build good grapplers, but to build a good environment mm-hmm. for people to learn the way they want to learn. Right. Right. And that, this kind of goes back to your point about being a 
good com- member of the community because you can't yeah. just if you know if you're not a good a member of a community and then uh, uh you go up to your sensei or teacher and say hey can i work on this specific or special it's yeah. it's not gonna be like a you know your teacher yeah, might not let you like who the yeah. hell are you yeah. to make requests <laughs> right. to my class i don't even know your name right like, i just saw you uh <laughs> getting in a shovel match over there right or get out right yeah. so yeah you have to be a good member of the community yeah right that's definite people have to trust you trust is first and foremost because it's like hey sensei I, i've been watching youtube and i've been watching this uh you know blast double that jordan burroughs has been hitting i want to try it uh-huh right right okay go with peter then you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like go with this guy but then you have to trust that person that they're not gonna get you're gonna hurt somebody right 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 i think in the beginning as a white or a yellow belt you just sort of have to establish a foothold and just take in as much as you can mm-hmm. of the environment of the dojo mm-hmm. and then little by little the more you learn you could start making some of these requests right, right right in the beginning when you know nothing when you don't even know what you know what you don't know right it, it's like, oh, Sensei, I think I could be a better grappler if I learned how to, uh, you know, fight as a lefty. It's like, based on what? Right. You yeah. know, based on 30 hours of YouTube that you watched, <laughs> based on your conversation with your buddy that does BJJ down the street. Right, right. You know, based on your wrestling matches that you did in an after school program with, you know, a high school friend of yours, mm-hmm. like once a week, like, right, no. right. You know, so in the beginning, you have to have a sort of a base knowledge as well. Right. Have a base knowledge. People have to trust you. If people trust you, it's like, Hey, I'm working on something. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. So you're not only just in the beginning, in order to be a good grappler, you're not, you're not only just focusing on your own techniques, but you're learning to become a good partner too. Yeah. You have to learn how to learn. Right. And that took me a long time too. Right. Right. Because I've always despised uh, the types of teachers growing up that were like, you have to do it like this, and this is the only way. Right. And if you can't do it like this, you're behind. Mm-hmm. You know. So essentially, like every teacher in school, right, would call my mom and be like, yo, your kid is behind. Uh-huh. Right? He is not keeping up. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's like he is not memorizing the periodic table. And I always <laughs> was like, what for? Why do I have to memorize any of right, this? Right, right, right. You know? And I probably didn't go about the right way either yeah. because, you know, as a kid, I'm being that guy that's like, hey, sensei, you know, uh, why don't you do it like this? It's like, <laughs> Bro, you just started judo, you know, three years ago. Right, right. right. So, yeah, I probably didn't go about the right way as a learner either. But it's a two-way street, right. you know, and just as like an employee and an employer have right. a managing down and a managing up, mm-hmm. right? That two-way communication system is a two-way communication system. Right. Right. So, it, and then it goes from teacher to student, and and between student to and student too. So student to student. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to be able to be concise and tell people how you're feeling and thinking. Right. Right. If you feel unsafe, you have to point it out in a way that's going to be mm-hmm. digested by the other person when you communicate that way. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. If something hurts, you can't just keep it in and then keep working on it, and then all of a sudden you blow out your elbow, or your back. Mm-hmm. Right, you don't want you don't want that. So you want to be communicative. You want to be concise in the dojo, mm-hmm. right? Because time is super limited. You know, if we have two minutes of doing drills, and if you're trying to talk to the person about something and something you saw on YouTube and explain, and a minute and a half goes by, you've robbed that person of 45 seconds of their drill time. Right. Right. So you have to understand that too. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when I see a little bit too much of that, I'll just address the whole class and be like, "All right, less talking, more judo, guys. Less talking, more judo." Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and so, so being a good okay, it's it's about listening to the other person well, and then accommodating and whatnot. And yeah, but sometimes, so it's now it, it kind of goes to the nature of grappling. You know, it's a it's an intense sport. It can be very intense, yeah. and sometimes you know, people want that intensity in the uh, yeah. practice and whatnot, or even yeah. they think that's the way to win. Mm. So how do you think uh, you can, like, do you think uh, when you practice, you need to dial up your intensity as high as you can? Or is there a different way to practice that kind of intensity? What do you think? That's a very, very good question. It's like a lever, right? You have to turn it up, turn it down, right? Depending on the person you're going with. Right. Right. Because like I always say, 
If you raise in your hand, go pick around, and no one wants to work out with you, you're the problem. Right, right. It's right. that thing in poker, right? If right. you can't stop, spot the sucker in the first 30 minutes, you are the sucker. It's the right. same idea. <laughs> yeah. Right? It really is. So people have this mindset of like, I'm intense. I work hard. I go hard. Like, that's just me. And now all of a sudden, like, they're doing this and then thinking that the other person might be impressed or, oh, I'm living up to my expectation of me being authentic me because mm. I'm an intense, tough guy. But in reality, the other person's like, oh, man, like, I don't want to work out with this guy. He's like all over me. Like I ate an elbow. Mm -hmm. Right. Now that person doesn't want to work out with you. Lost a great training partner. Right. Right. So you have to vary it. There's times for intensity and there's times for right, reducing intensity. Mm -hmm. You have to know your partner. If I like going really hard and if I know that other guy likes to go really hard, that's great. Right. right. Go for that stuff. Right. You know? Like, I've been in a dojo where it's like, oh, I identified the one grapple. He was a D1 wrestler. Mm -hmm. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he wanted to throw down. Right, right. And I was kind of like feeling that that day too, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, all right. You know, and we, we, we threw down in a very respectful way. It didn't escalate in a negative way. And it was like one of the best rounds I had in a long time. Like, right. This is a long time ago. Right, right. Right? But then I'm going with someone else the next round, and they're a lot lighter than me. They're 140 pounds. They just seek me out. They mm. want to work out with me because they kind of felt like they could trust me, right? Right, right. Even though I outweigh them by 60 pounds. And sure, I'm moving, right? I'm not putting weight on. I'm not sprawling. I'm not pressure passing, right? So now both of those people want to work out with me again. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to get better. And So being right. going hard all the time, can't do it. And this is the thing. If you're a person that goes intense all the time, you roll your ankle, mm -hmm. now you can't fight that way. Right, now right. you can't work out now because you, you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. But if you roll your ankle and you can go soft, you can go gentle, you could just be sort of fluid, you could still come into the dojo and drill. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give you an example. Kevin Muhammad mm -hmm. coming back from a knee surgery. He's, right, right. I don't know. It's probably five months after his ACL surgery. Right, right. Now he's moving. Now he's drilling, he's moving, he's doing like light rondori. Right, right, right. And he knows who to go with, who not to go with. Right. I was like, don't go with him, don't go with him. He could go with him, and he could always go with me. Yeah. And because he was able to vary intensity before, he's capable of doing rondori now in a way that's safe. Yeah. Right? Uh, maybe not before, but now he definitely <laughs> has to, do it that way yeah. to, be, to remain safe. Right. Right. So you have to have the ability to dial it up, tone it down. And you have to be visual to look, look at the other person and read their body language. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he doesn't like it when I freaking drop my elbow on his face. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? who, who would? <laughs> I mean, who does, right? Yeah. But some people don't like it. Some people don't welcome it. Some people don't learn that way. Right. Right. So you have to be able to vary it. Don't always go intense 100%. And, you know, I understand the mentality of like, I like going hard. I'm a guy that goes hard. Right, right. Yes, but you can stick with that and die by it but then you you're gonna have problems when two years from now no one wants to work out with you mm -hmm. you're just not gonna get better that's that's a great yeah. uh, one of the biggest lessons i learned like doing judo with you because mm -hmm. i like uh, i wrestled in high school and then high school wrestling you they kind of instilled that mindset into you intensity intensity yeah. intensity being scrappy you know it just I guess it, it might be, I think you told me that it's more like an American thing. Like I, I heard from you that in Russia, judo wrestling are not really about that intensity. They're more like drill focus and whatnot. Yeah. It's a little bit cultural too. Yeah. yeah. And there's another factor in there too, right? Like what? What do you mean? Like for instance, like in high school wrestling, everyone started wrestling at around the same time. Oh, right. So everyone's yeah. around a similar skill set, mm -hmm. right? At the dojo, you're a black belt. And then a green belt comes onto the mat and they've only been doing it for, you know, X amount of years. Right, right. right. And then having that same intensity in the wrestling room that you're going with the, someone that's your peer, mm. right? Now, all of a sudden, you think that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. but the other person's thinking, man, this freaking guy, Peter, is bullying me. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> like that time I walked into the locker room and there was a bunch of green belts talking. I know. That, that right? was my I wake up in, call. Yeah. Like right outside the door, I was like going to the locker room to get a, like a bottle of water or something. As I'm trying to open, waiting for the open the door, it's like, I hear like through the door, like, oh man, that Peter's a dick. I huh? like, oh man, he always goes hard. Like, oh, I tweaked my knee. And there's like a whole symposium going on in there about, you know, who Peter hurt, right. and banged up. And I opened the door and they were like, 
I know. Right? I that was my yeah. wake up call, and then you know you told me about that. I, I you know, I mean, yeah. it was like multiple things that led me led up to me being like being able to dial things down yeah. and whatnot. And then yeah, it's and that's a good point you pointed out about like the difference between like a scholastic athletic program versus yeah your dojo in your community yeah because yeah. there's so many different types of people <laughs> and then in, when you're in school everyone's healthy like you're a young person in your teens and your 20s but yeah you know you in your local dojo there might be people who started who love martial arts but couldn't do it when they're young but finally starting in yep. their 30s 40s you know yeah you want those people exactly around. right yeah. man the four years in high school wrestling right mm -hmm. the two years in bjj wherever it was right and now all of a sudden you're doing judo and you have right. you know eight nine years of grappling experience and you're a brown belt and now you want to throw down and you're right. 28 years old versus the person that's an accountant that's never done grappling before mm -hmm. worked a nine to five sat in a desk all day came to the dojo wants to get better wants to feel good mm -hmm. right that person eating an elbow is different right right that person eating an elbow is different so everyone has their different starting points mm -hmm. and everyone has a different place they are at when they're in the dojo mm -hmm. so you kind of have to account for all this right right and a good emotionally intelligent, right? I talked a little bit about emotional intelligence too before, but like an uh, emotionally intelligent person can read that mm -hmm. on a person, right? This person had a bad day. It's going to go, guys go through a divorce. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this person wants to throw down and you can read it, mm -hmm. right? And then you can manage that too, right? right? Sometimes like, for instance, like I stubbed my toe the other day. My toe was freaking screaming. Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't really want to go hard. Right, hard, right. Right. And then, you know, I've said like, hey, my, my toe is killing me. If you're going to work out me, you can't go nuts. Right, right, right. Right? And you have to stick to that. Yeah. If you're saying, hey, let's go light, and you don't go light, and you escalate, <laughs> you have no accountability. Right. People are not going to trust you. Right. right? There's always that guy. You want to go light? Right? <laughs> it's like a running joke in the judo world right, or the right. dojo world. It's like, you want to go light? And the person that says you want to go light is going to try to take your head off. <laughs> I have, right? Yeah. I've, it's I've, an I've ism for a reason. That. Yeah, yeah. It's an ism for a reason. So if you say you want to go light, you better stick to it because right. your accountability and your branding in that way matters, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was like, dude, you have to go light. And then to my toe is screaming. He stepped on my toe. I'm like, oh, bro, bro, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> relax. Like, my toe's really hurting, man. Like, I can't really, right? Because he's going to get something out of that round for me. Right. <clears throat> but if he stepped on my foot twice and if he's going way too hard, I'm just going to be like, you know what? No, man. And then next time he's like, says you want to go? I'm going to be like, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> Uh, my toe was hurt the other day. Maybe it's broken. Right. And you kept stepping on it. Right, right. Right? Whether it's an accident or not, right? I mean, that matters too. Yeah. Right? And but like it was a successful round, mm -hmm. you know? A, so a, bit, a better grappler knows how to, you know, go with different types of people with different in uh, levels yep. of intensity. Yep. And yeah, yeah, I think it, that's, that's such a good... Uh, yeah, I mean, I personally had to go through it. I, uh, like I said, yeah. and then it really, not it, not only are you gonna be a better member of the community, you, like you said, you also get better as a yep. grappler. And yeah, it's yeah. very important to. And be there's a flip side of that too. Yeah, because if you're going in and you're going with just people who you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. right, you're doing yourself a disservice too. Right. And I'm guilty of this as well. Right? I'm guilty of all the things <laughs> that I, right? And, you know, I'm human, right? right? So I'm comfortable going with him. I like going with them. That person's, you know, not going to try to hurt me or, mm -hmm. right? You get comfortable. Right. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, I don't want to go with that guy because he goes a little too hard. Mm. But sometimes you need that. Right. You need that stimulus. Because in a tournament, right, someone's going to go hard. And, and you know. In the mythical streets we talked about, yeah, they're gonna people are going to try to take your head off. Yeah. So you need that stimulus. You just can't have it 10 rounds right. in a row. You right. just can't do it. It's just not sustainable. right? So you need sort of a balance in your Rondori structure. Mm. And I like to do, you know, sort of first couple kind of get the ball rolling, mm -hmm. warm up a little bit, you know, have like a teaching round where I'm like not teaching during that time, but I'm, it's more instructional, like uh, nonverbal instructional. Right, right. Giving them opportunities, not being a dick about it, like, yeah, look, Osoto's right there. Right. Or like letting them come in and then I'm like resisting and then maybe taking a break for something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then I want to be challenged too, right? And I'll go with the toughest guys in the room, mm -hmm. you know? And I used to do these judo camps too. And then I'll try to do that. Like, I'll at least go two or three matches with someone that's right. significantly better than me. 
I see. Yeah. Right. And it's it's, it's some a, some guys are like you got to go with every round better than you. I didn't really believe that, and I didn't really buy that. Because yeah, if, if you can't, I know myself. I would just be sad <laughs> the rest of the week if I just took a beating for 10 rounds I'll, straight. I would, right? I, would, I would feel that way too. But not only that, yeah. it's not about just the mentality, but like if you only go with someone who's better, you can't work on stuff. Like you need, no. you know, some yeah. of the things, new techniques you were trying to integrate into your system. You can't do yeah. that on uh, to someone who's better than you when yeah. you're just starting yeah. out. Yeah. And you're not trying to win. Right. During run thing, that's yeah. that's the thing that I have to reiterate the most. You're trying to work on stuff, mm-hmm. right? Because if every round that I went with someone inferior in rank, mm-hmm. someone that I know I'm better than, and if the goal was to beat them, mm-hmm. I could do that with my eyes closed, right? Right. But if I'm trying to work on something or trying to counter something mm-hmm. or hit a specific combination, the game is different, mm-hmm. right? Right. And you have to have individual goals for each round that you're doing. Mm-hmm. That way you could get something out of every single match that you do. That's all again. You what you said uh, about the deliberate practice. Randori yeah, is also yep. deliberate practice. Yeah. Yeah. Everything you're doing in the room, you're doing for a reason. It took right. me forever to figure some of this stuff out. Right. Right. Because I used to do that at these training camps in the beginning. Mm. Try to win every single match mm-hmm. at all costs. Right. And some people do that. Some people, right? It's learning, knowing yourself. Right. Some people thrive in that competition environment, and even in the training camp, it's like I want to win every single match. Mm-hmm. And if that's what gets you going. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Right? Maybe you're getting a lot out of that. Right. Not me. Not my not my personal style of learning. But you, you do know? you still even if that's your style, you have to know how to adjust that depending on your partner. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to take yourself out of the comfort zone. Right. I'll tell you when I was in um a training camp in uh Japan for the Tokyo Grand Slam. Right. Right. There's killers in the room. Right. Top four guys in Japan, top you know, two guys from every country, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there was an all Japan champ in the room. I went with him. Mm-hmm. You know, he killed me. I went with the national, the champion from uh, Germany. Mm-hmm. You know, I went. I even went with you know David Mora from Brazil. Oh, okay. This is yeah, huge he's like guy. six right. four, two fifty. Yeah. He famously has that Tomonage in the heavyweight division that no one's ever seen a Tomonage in the heavyweight <laughs> division. <laughs> yeah. It was Ochi to Yoko Tomonage. I went with him. I was so scared. Uh huh. You know. Uh, partially because he was standing next to me uh, <laughs> and he was like you want to go he was like looking down because I'm like oh, a foot shorter than him and I was like I didn't really want to go but I was like alright we'll go right right you know? and then that was like survival mode right try not to get him to get two grips on I'm not really mm-hmm. trying to win it right and I'm trying to mm-hmm. practice not grip fighting in a way where I don't let a much taller person put their hand right. on my back how, you know? how was he as a uh, Randori partner he's good he yeah. slammed me hard twice uh-huh. right uh, he threw me with a Harai and kind of landed on me. Mm. You know, and it wasn't, you know, I'm like 220, but he was like 250. Right. So it wasn't very comfortable. He was a lot taller than me. Right. He was tough, really right. tough round. You know, uh, and I got something out of that. Right. You know, and then, right, next round, I probably went with someone a little bit lighter, <laughs> you know, and varied right. my intensity. And yeah. there's probably like a high school Japanese kid on the mat at the time or something like that. And I worked out with that kid. Yeah. But Luciano Cohea from another brazilian world champion uh-huh. right i worked out with him in judo and right i had goals working out with him mm-hmm. and then i could go with someone that's like so someone much lower on the ranking list mm-hmm. and i'm not trying to win every match I'm trying to get something out of every man right right and then if they do something spectacular if they're friendly enough i'll ask them like hey what was that thing you did right right you know and i got some interesting things nice out of those conversations so you right. bring up a good point about interesting point about body types so mm. the grappling has a lot, you know, you're using your body yeah. weight a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah. your body type matters. So definitely does. What do you think to be a better grappler? How do you think people should approach their own body types and then, you know, practice partners, body types and whatnot? Yeah. So body types, uh, I'll use judo as a specific example, right? right. Uh, if you're 81 kilos and you like going over the back, mm-hmm. That same style won't work against someone that's a foot taller than you. Right. Just won't. Yeah. You have to sort of vary it into a going underneath Sayanagi person. Mm-hmm. But if you have no drop saying uh, lower Sayanagi, lower lifting throws, mm-hmm. you're going to have a very hard time with someone significantly taller than you. Right. Right. If you're a shorter 81 kilo person and you love Sode, you love going underneath and you're fighting someone that's 130 pounds, that's a foot shorter than you, you're not going to be able to hit those same moves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So you kind of have to vary and have a little bit of each. Right. Right. And if you're competing, it's a little bit different, right? If you're competing, 
you want to have the maximum type of judo style for that weight class because right. everyone's going to be within a certain height range. Right, right. Right. So you don't need if you're like 81 kilos and you like the overhand grip, you don't need to learn like a drop stand because no one's going to be that much taller than you. Right. Right. Based on these things. But if you want to be a better overall grappler, mm. you need to know how to fight a much taller person, how to fight a much shorter, shorter person, and being able to be fighting the, both of these people within that range comfortably. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I, fighting against the righty, fighting against the lefty. Right? Oh, yeah. Some people have that mindset of like, I have one thing I do, and I'm going to force it every single time because I'm imposing my will. It's an imposition of will. Some people have that mindset, right? I used to, to be okay. like that. I used to be like that. Yeah. Like, you know, I used to spam Seo even like even to people who are shorter than me. Yeah. You're willing to admit that on a public forum? Oh, uh, so yeah, I already <laughs> did. I mean, it's, I used to. And, but then I realized that, yeah, I mean, I need to, it's not just about, um, it's not just about like, what, uh, you know, certain techniques working better on this people or whatever it's yeah. more about you need to vary i realized that i needed to stop spamming saying i guess do other things so that yeah. you know i can have a better prac i can have better rounds yeah. with other people too you know yeah and there's a good like a realization yeah and so it's like when you're a better grappler right mm -hmm. when you like you just said if you're not just spamming sanagi yeah you're trying to develop an overall holistic grappling style right. that is sort of differentiate to a certain extent to mm. each and every athlete right or your opposition right you just know more and you just have a much better idea and you can answer questions that you didn't know you even had right 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 for instance when i ask someone why is it that in wrestling you see more drop steps with the knee going to the floor mm. and you see less of it in mma mm -hmm. why is it that an mma fighter walks into a wrestling gym and say hey can you show me how to do a double mm -hmm. and the wrestler's like yeah, sure. My double is so much better than yours. And the wrestler <laughs> yeah. shows it, but then they're showing it with the knee going down to the ground. Right. And when the MMA fighter says, why do I have to put the knee down to the ground? They're like, you just do. Right? Right, right. It's like, how do you answer that question? I, I asked that I mean, one of the other yeah. episodes. People, a lot of people ask yeah. that question. Yeah. You know, and it has level, just everything to do with level changes too. Right. Right? If you're standing upright, you don't need the level change that low by dropping the knee to the floor. Right, right? It's right. like even though, uh, compensating too much. But, you know what I mean? But in wrestling, it's about the context. About the, yeah, it's uh, about the context. It's yeah. about the rules. The rules matter so right. much. And then right? to be a better grappler, you have to know why. You have to know the why, too. You have to understand. Yeah, if why. you have to know the whys and why do we, you know, hey, sensei, why do we do this? And, you know, it just really comes down to having a good sensei that knows yeah. this stuff, too. So right. You can have an open dialogue about it, mm -hmm. right? So it's the responsibility of the instructor, too, to keep up, right? Keep up. Right. I'm saying that now, you know, at the age of 36 when I'm super involved. Mm. Who knows, right, when I'm 50 years old, when maybe my knees are messed up and I can't even walk. <laughs> like, if I'm going to keep up with anything. Yeah. You, know, you never know, right? So I'm not trying to, like, point fingers or anything like that. But it's very important, I think, uh, at least to be, to be very knowledgeable. To, at least to be aware of these Yeah, you got to be aware yeah. of it, you know. Uh, I hate it when it's like, you know, I hear things about someone asking a teacher about something and they just say, ah, it don't work. Oh, right. Don't Without try it. Stick with this. Right. And then it's like you need to be able to explain the why and learn the why. Right. Because that's going to add to your overall knowledge base. Yeah. And it'll stick with you know? the students better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's sort of the overall how to be a better grappler. Mm -hmm. Right. We covered a lot. Yeah. Um, being able to vary intensity, being diff learning yourself, learning types. Anything else that uh, we're missing? I think that's about it. I mean, it's a uh, we. It's it, there's a constant theme in these uh, you know episodes. You know, the, being a good partner, knowing yourself, being, uh, finding a good teacher and whatnot. But I think yeah, they're very important, and that's why we keep talking about it and. Yeah, I think it's it's good that we you uh, yeah. are so knowledgeable about these things and then bring it, bring it out to people. Yeah, anything. Thanks, man. So yeah, of course, and and it's it's fun to talk to you about these things. So any closing remarks? Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta work. You know, do all these things, and uh, sometimes you gotta step out the comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but you can't just do it all the time, and then you have to know your body, you right? Have to listen to your body. You have to have. Uh, what is the word? Uh, mindfulness. Yeah. People say. Yeah. Or you have to be mindful. Yeah. Or you have to 
And you have to be a good communicator because mm. martial arts is very, very close contact. You got to look at it like a good marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's communication. It's important. Yeah, you important. gotta communicate. Yeah. You know, you have you have to pick your battles. Yeah. Sometimes you yeah. have to increase the intensity. Sometimes you just have to sit on the couch and let them be. Right. You know. <laughs> That's right. So right, and it's yeah, grappling. Being a grappling, it's not just about physical attributes or physical skills. It's about the a whole. It, it involves everything about you as a person. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Stay tuned Thank for you. the next episode. Yep. And yep. find us on social and you can reach out to us. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Instagram, Shintaro Higashi. Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, Peter Yu. Mm -hmm. I have a YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. look forward to talking to you guys next week.